The primary for the aileron we said was a roll. So if we just do a little bit of an aileron, we can see we get a roll. All right? So that one went down and that one went up. In this video I learn all the functions and effects of the control surfaces. Starting off with the primary effect and then we moved on to the secondary effect of each control and what happens when this effect is left unchecked. I'm going to roll the aircraft but keep the roll okay. and then you will see the yaw and then we will get the spiral dive. We are about to stall and this is our adventures in and around South Africa. This is my first official flight lesson in an ongoing series documenting my training towards my private pilot's license. In this first lesson, my instructor Shamir teaches me the functions and effects of each control surface before we go out and see it in practice. This teaches the fundamental basics of how an aeroplane flies and maneuvers. Just a disclaimer, although this video is meant to be informative, it should not be used as instruction. Please consult your instructor. Let's get into it. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at the primary controls and primary effects of those controls. So if we're looking at an aircraft, for you as the pilot, so let's look at the ailerons first. We said the ailerons runs on the lateral axis, which runs from wingtip to wingtip. Okay. And they're controlled by the stick inside the cockpit. If we deflect the control column to the left, the aileron on the left will then go up. A nice way to remember that is thumbs up, side up. Okay. The primary for the aileron we said was a roll. Yeah. The thumb trick makes it really easy to see sides. and understand the movement of the ailerons. First to the right, you can see the left aileron going down. And then when turning to the left, the left aileron goes up. Rolling along the longitudinal axis. Um, and then we look at the rudder or the vertical stabilizer, the whole unit called the vertical stabilizer, the moving part or flap type control called the rudder. If we were to deflect the rudder to the left, the aerodynamic force would then be applied in which direction? This way. That way, yeah. okay? Because if we're looking at it in this perspective, your angle of attack is then increased on this side. Yeah. So the forces is generated that way. So the tail of the aircraft would then move in the direction of the aerodynamic force, which then yaws the nose in the opposite direction. So here you can see what happens when you step on the right rudder pedal, the nose yaws to the right. And when released, it returns to the center and the same effect to the other side. Then if we're looking at the elevator, again from you as the pilot, the whole unit is called the horizontal stabilizer. The flap type control is called the elevator. If the elevator is deflected downwards by pushing the control column forward, the elevator is producing the aerodynamic force in that direction. It will want to lift the horizontal stabilizer and so the tail of the aircraft up. And again, in practice, you can see the nose going down with the stick forward and the nose coming up when you pull back on the stick. Yeah, so that was your primary effects of the three controls. Now yeah. we're going to look at the secondary effects of the three controls. If we deflect this aileron down, the aircraft will then roll. Okay. Now because of the weather cocking or weather veining principle, the weight is then shifted towards the center of the earth, as we explained earlier. So the aircraft will have a tendency, if left unbalanced, to slide in that direction. If the aircraft is in sliding in that direction, we have the air forces now, or relative airflow, changing its direction, putting a greater force on the tail than on the, on the nose of the aircraft, which causes the aircraft to yaw. So the secondary effect of the aileron is yaw. We said, in theory, by us deflecting the aileron, we're going to get yaw. So now we're going to demonstrate this so that you can physically see. Yeah. So I'm going to roll aircraft in your direction using aileron only. Okay. So I'm going to go aileron into your direction, Look, there's our side slip, yeah. where the veining comes in, look how the nose starts showing. Can you see the nose is moving? Yeah, yeah, We're not yeah. touching the rudder, so we get the roll. Okay. So primary is this, secondary is roll, you see? Yeah. Okay, let's recover that, get it back to normal. 
and I'm going to do the rudder in the opposite, I'm going to use to the right. Okay. So if I just push on the rudder, primary, there's primary, we can see the yaw happening. Yeah. Okay? So let's push it a little bit more. Now you can see, can you see how that wing is not going up? Yeah. Because this wing is moving slower. We're generating more lift that side, less lift this side. Now the plane goes into a row. Uh, okay. And that's your secondary effects. Yeah. Of both. Okay, let's slowly recover. And then for this one, we're going to go a little bit more that way, just so we're not on top of a building. Yeah. If you are enjoying this video so far and you are interested in the process of doing your pilot's license, please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to be notified when each of the next few videos are released. And then it was time to see what happens when the secondary effects are left unchecked. This is where it gets exciting. And then our hazel requirements is still valid, okay, within 15 minutes. Yeah. And I'm going to demonstrate to you again to, in your direction, so just yeah. to make it a bit more exciting. I'm going to use the ailerons first. I'm going to roll the aircraft but keep the roll. Okay. And then you will see the yaw and then we will get the spiral dive. Yeah. So I'm going to demonstrate it to you. I'm not going to show you the recovery. And then I'm going to demonstrate it to you with the recovery. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do the roll first. Okay. I'm going to put the aileron to the left. So the left must go up and the right will go down. There's your roll. Look how the yaw comes in. You see the yaw happening? Yeah. And we're keeping it there. So there's a roll, yaw, a roll, yaw, a roll, yaw. Look at the nose. Yeah. First thing we see, nose is pitching down, speed's running away and RPM is going up. Okay, yeah. recover. Close the power. Ailerons and rudder to get it straight. Gently apply pressure to get it level and then power back to the cruise. Happy. Okay. Hey. Yeah. So it's not so drastic like they make it out to be. It's actually yeah. quite gentle. And it goes in slowly. So it's, it is more than enough time to recognize symptoms of this. Yeah. And like we saw now when we did it, first symptom, you see the ground. Yeah. We don't want to be seeing the ground, we want to be flying. Yeah. Then we confirm it because it can be that we put the nose down intentionally or unintentionally. So we confirm, why am I seeing the ground? Let me check. Speed was running away, RPM was spiking. That means we're in a spiral. Yeah. Let's fix that. We must prevent that RPM first and try and get the speed down and okay. also fix the wings. Yeah. The first thing we do, we get rid of the power. It's pointless in doing it and still going down. So we close the power all the way. Then we use both our stick and our feet to get the plane on the wings level. Okay. And I'm going to do one with the rudder. Okay. okay. So again, do it in your direction, just to make it more dramatic for you. Okay. So I'm going to apply the rudders first. Yeah. As I apply rudders, I'm pushing on my left rudder. Yeah. And then we can see the yaw coming in, right? Yeah. Almost instantaneously, we see the lift on yeah. my faster going wing on my side. There we now in a row and a yaw at the same time. My yeah. stick still neutral, but it's starting to go down. You see that? Yeah. There we can see the, rise, the, the, the ground looking towards us. Let's check. Are we going down? Yes. Let's check it there. Up. RPM up. Yeah. Close the power. Opposite on rudder and aileron. Back to level. Gently get the speed up. So the speed goes back to normal. It's level. And then power back in. Okay. okay. So it's a very simple maneuver. It's not something that happens quite drastically, although yeah. it can happen. Okay. Um, but it will more happen in the event that it's like an uncontrolled upper situation. Okay, so how do we prevent the plane from actually going into this in the first place? Because as pilots, if we say we want to turn that way, we must then say we want it to roll, and we say we want it to yaw. We want to be in control of both primaries. Yeah. We don't want the plane to do what, what we don't tell it to do. To do that, we need to do a turn using the ailerons and the feet at the same time. So if we want to turn in your direction, we're going to use aileron and rudder to get the turn going. And to keep the plane in balance, we make sure that the ball is in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Now you can feel on the sling, she's very uh, nimble, she's cool, very well balanced. It's yeah. barely using rudder. We probably got a one centimeter deflection on the rudder just to do this turn. Yeah. Okay. The more bank you add, the more rudder you're going to require. Okay. And then we keep it level. So this is how we prevent the plane from entering a spiral dive. Okay. We're using coordinated controls, rudder and aileron at the same time to then prevent it from going into a yeah. spiral. Okay. Nice. After Shamir demonstrated, I did it a few times until we were both happy and comfortable that I understand the fundamentals. 
So we headed back to home base getting ready for the next lesson where I learned to balance these forces in straight hand level flights. If you haven't seen the previous videos go check it out, I'm trying to document the whole process of becoming a pilot as in depth as possible. So please consider subscribing if you're interested in learning and hit the notification bell to be notified when the next video is up. Until then, dream big, fly high and live the adventure.